Hello everyone, I am Roseto Durkista and this is Introduction to Computing. So today, we will talk about computer memory. So computer memory works like the, just like the human brain, just like the human memory. It stores data, you can retrieve the data, you can play with this data, you can uh, manipulate that information regarding on what purpose uh, what do you what do you want to uh, produce as an output from that information okay. so computer memory is a generic term of all the different types of data storage technology that a computer may use so in the screen as you can see we have a diagram where in the top is the computer memory and on the lower on the second level we have primary memory and secondary memory and on primary memory we have RAM and ROM uh, this examples the RAM and ROM are those uh, memory that will not store uh, information after the computer is shut down or turned off so let's for example the RAM or ARAM or random access memory example for random access memory is ASRAM and DRAM those those are your uh, the the most popular the most commonly known memory card in your computer uh, it is being attached on the motherboard uh, while your computer is at work while the user is using the computer uh, those informations those data that the user use or the computer use will be stored in the primary memory but after the computer will turn uh, turned off if this uh, information or if this um, resources this data will not be transferred to secondary memory the user will lost all those information so when it times uh, when it comes that the user will turn the computer on again those previous data those previous information can't be retrieved anymore because those data let's say for example you are um, doing some encoding using microsoft word and you have not set the auto save or you have not uh, save your file into a specific drive it might get lo it might uh, get destroyed when you turned off the computer much worse if uh, there is a fluctuation of the current and you have you don't have an interruptible power supply so all those uh, text that you have encoded in your Microsoft Word if the feature of Microsoft Word which is autosave is not enabled um, those will lose and you will start from zero so again the example of RAM is those commonly known computer memory where you can see uh, it is something like this uh, the, the, the length is something like this and it has um, I think it's uh, one inch uh, in the width then the height is I guess four four inches four inches by one i guess and it is being attached on the motherboard those are the random access memory while room the read only memory are those types that um, you can only read the information from it but you can you cannot um, manipulate you cannot change the, the the information within that memory type maybe there are some cases that you could um, update the information within that room but with a higher level of difficulty let's say for example those uh, BIOS the basic input output system those uh, information is saved in uh, in a type of room in your computer ROM read only memory but since you can access all those BIOS settings or basic input output settings 
that means um, your computer allow you to upgrade your firmware but with a certain level of difficulty because usually you could not uh, access the information save in your room you cannot uh, manipulate your room then uh, under the room non volatile um, the examples are PROM, uh, EPROM, EEPROM. Well, so after the primary memory, we have this uh, secondary memory. The examples of secondary memory are HDD or hard disk drive, SDD, solid state drive, um, compact disk, floppy disk, magnet top. If you're from the 70s or 60s, you might know what is floppy disk, magnet top. Compact disk, in short, CD or DVD. SSD, that is the latest um, type of drive, which is faster, as, as they say, it is, it is faster than the hard disk drive. Uh, it works like a flash drive or pen drive it is faster than the HDD a solid state drive hardest drive or HDD uh, the commonly used uh, storage in your computer your, in your machine when uh, when you open your computer and you try to click on my computer or this computer or open an explorer you might see local desk C or local desk D and E and so on and so forth those partitions or those local desks that is displayed in your uh, explorer those are a logical representation of your desk drive or your secondary memory as an example so in those drives in those locations or in those uh, partitions it is where you store your uh, information your data for a longer time permanently as long as your um, hardest drive or SSD is usable not broken not being fried so that is the secondary memory you can store data and inform or information for a longer time as long as you use the data or the information while on the primary memory those memories are, uh, so for example, in ROM, uh, only readable, and RAM, uh, random access memory, you can add, edit, delete, but temporarily, when the computer turn off, all the data might lose, might get loose, and then when you turn your computer on, you will not able to retrieve all those information. So that is the difference between primary and secondary memory. Let's talk about cache memory. So if you are going to buy a computer, especially laptop, you might uh, hear someone about cache memory. Hey, you must go find a um, better laptop with a uh, bigger size of cache memory. So what is cache memory? Well, sometimes of, uh, some types of computer memory are designed to be very fast, meaning that the central processing unit can access data stored there very quickly. We call it cache memory. <coughs> So, the, the, it's not really that the computer is de very dependent in your cache memory, but with a larger, let's say, or larger space in your cache memory or have greater cache memory, the, the effect would be your computer might will work faster than the other computer. Cache memory, also called CPU memory, is high-speed static random access memory, still a type of RAM, or SRAM, that a computer microprocessor can access more quickly than it can access regular random access memory, or RAM. So this memory is typically, typically integrated directly into the CPU chip, or placed on a separate chip that has a separate bus interconnect with the CPU. So, it may be if this is your CPU, then there is a, a certain app uh, say for example if uh, this is your your cpu this is the physical manifestation of your cpu there might be a little space in here like as you can see in here and uh, 
there's a, a little space here for cache memory so it is being integrated in your central processing unit but other than that it could be that it is being separated so if this is the physical manifestation of your um, central processing unit your cache memory would be here or in the top or in the bottom or from the side it is being separate but is connected with a separate bus to the central processing unit so it's like there is another box here but is connected to your central processing unit this is your central processing unit and you have another box here or chip for your uh, cache memory so the purpose of that uh, cache memory say this as an example you are a vendor of a fish you're a fish vendor and then on your table yeah, on your table you have uh, say you have five kilos of fish in your table currently you have five kilos one customer approach your store or your stall and said i'll take two kilos and you give two kilos of fish right the remaining fish is three kilos another customer approached your stall and said i'll take another two kilos and you give two kilos of fish the remaining fish is one kilo now another customer approach your stall and it and that customer say i'll take three but you only have one kilo of fish in your stall currently but you have uh, let's say for example you have another 100 kilos from your warehouse so how would you make it work faster so that the customer will uh, uh, not get bored and waiting with the uh, two kilos or three kilo kilos fish he ordered with this concept if you're the vendor you might say you if you have someone you might say um, hey can you get another 10 kilos of fishes from the warehouse bring it here because there is another customer that uh, wants to buy three kilos or two kilos of fishes and if that helper would run this for example it would take him to run to the warehouse for at least uh, five minutes five minutes from here from your stall to the warehouse and then five minutes from the warehouse to your stall that would take 10 minutes excluding the time your helper will fetch and scale the fishes that it would be exactly 10 kilos say for example if that helper is slow uh, he could not work fast so maybe it would take another five minutes so a total of 15 minutes do you think your customer would wait 15 minutes for a three kilos of fish your customer might get angry might lose the uh, enthusiasm to buy from your stall do you get the, the the idea do you get the can you picture it out 
if you are the customer you have to wait 15 minutes just to get a three kilos of fish because there is currently one kilo in the stall but the owner said she can provide you three kilos but you have to wait because she just told her helper to get another 10 kilos from the warehouse which would take 15 minutes how about if this is your stool this is your table and this side you have you say a box that would contain 20 kilos you display 10 kilos you put another 20 kilos in the box at your uh, side when those uh, 10 kilos fish if those 10 kilos fish in your table will run out will be all sold you would not um, it will not take time for another customer or it, the, the, the next customer will not wait that 15 minutes long just to buy 3 kilos of fish because you already had 20 kilos in your side and then by the time you get 10 kilos from your side from the box and you put it in your table you would go you would say to your helper now that i have already taken another 10 kilos from this box you go get 10 kilos of uh, fish from the warehouse doesn't matter if that um, helper would return 15 minutes or uh, 20 minutes you can still provide fishes to the customers now that box that box in the side in your side or of the the stall owner represents the cash it represents the cash so the stall owner the fish vendor will work faster giving the needs of the customer because it has a small storage of fish in her side that would cater for up to 20 kilos of fishes that is the concept of cash memory you get the idea if you don't get the idea please comment down below so that i can uh, explain more about the cache memory the, the the concept of cache memory now how about if the cache memory is empty and then that's the time instead of you go looking for fish from that cache memory or from that uh, box in your side you would be then looking for a fish in your warehouse your warehouse represents your random access memory or the ram or the uh, memory card the commonly known memory card of your computer your warehouse represents the commonly known memory card of your computer it is your ram this is your cache and the warehouse is your ram the temporary or the primary storage okay so continuation on cache memory so cache memory has uh, four different level <coughs> the level one cache memory it is the type of memory in which data is stored and accepted that are immediately stored in the central processing unit or the CPU. Most commonly used register is the accumulator, program counter, and address register. To demonstrate the L1 or the level 1 cache or L1 cache memory, if this is your central processing unit or the CPU, it could be found inside your central processing unit. 
it could be the accumulator the program counter or the address register it is already integrated in your l1 uh, in your central processing unit the l1 cache memory or the level one or the registers level two cache memory it is the fastest memory which has faster access time where data is temporarily stored for faster access in my previous example i give you uh, an example about a fish vendor and a box in her side that box in her side is the l2 cache memory And then the L3 cache memory, the level 3 cache memory. So, it is memory in which computer works currently. It is small in size and once power is turned off, data no longer stays in the memory or in this memory. It is your uh, the commonly known random access memory or the commonly known uh, memory card of your computer. Uh, when we say memory card you might think of this uh, something like this color green attached in your motherboard that is your l3 or main memory level 3 memory cache memory while you are working on your computer all the information that is uh, used or needed in your current actions current work so for example if you're encoding on a microsoft word or any word processing application this information is temporarily saved in your level 3 or main memory but it will not stay in that memory not unless you are going to save your um, work into your level 4 or secondary memory so the level 4 or secondary memory, it is external memory which is not fast as main memory but data stays permanently in this memory. Like the HDD or hard disk drive, the SSD or solid state drive, those compact disk or DVDs, floppy disk, magnetop. So those are your level 4 or secondary memory. okay so if you're going to draw your memory or the memory of the computer how it is being accessed it would look like this as you can see in your screen that is how your computer memory would work as illustrated okay so Hmm. So this is your cache memory. So this one, this box here. Okay, so this box here is your cache memory. And it has address and it has data. The address is the pointer or header for the central processing unit to know in which part of the memory the data or information or the resources is being stored think of this as a, say for example you're going to find something like uh, there is a large uh, you go inside a grocery store you'll go shopping you want to find a specific product 
most uh, shopping malls has this uh, what we call this uh, listings hanging above the stalls by looking through it you would see like uh, canned goods fruits or biscuits or anything uh, kitchen wares or any other information regarding on the 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 row of what are the products displayed on that certain row or certain stall so those hanging information are what we called address and because of that address we will be then able to determine that it is where we could retrieve our data that data that is being saved or where could we uh, put the data if we are the store owner so uh, we will go arrange some canned goods so we'll try to look this hanging information from from where or where are the stall where where is the the row for canned goods and by that we are able to make the work faster than being uh, like a blind looking for an item and you don't know where to find that item so imagine that that is an example of address and data inside your cache memory so in here we have the compares all with stored address simultaneously so memory address from processor so your central processing unit or your a cpu will is performing in an action is performing a computation and in that computation it needs resources it needs so for example it is going to add two numbers and it looks for number one or input one and input two and those input one and input two so for example three and five it is saved in your cache memory so from your central processing unit or uh, cpu it will uh, deliver an address and try to lock that address in your cache memory it will compare with all stored addresses simultaneously if that address is found it will retrieve the data and address location this address location is the address where the data is being or can be retrieved or can be saved or can be stored if and only if that address is not found in your inside your cache that's the time that your central processing unit or the cpu will try to find that information in your main memory so if that information so if we go back to the example with this face of vendor so if the box that could contain 20 kilos of fish is empty the vendor would uh, give a command to here helper to look for a fish in the warehouse and that warehouse is represents this main memory so so if the resources could not be found or the address could not be found in your cache your central processing unit will look for that information in your main, main memory so main memory access if address not in the cache so it will access your main memory so that is how the central processing unit or the CPU works with your cache memory and your main memory
So again, a recap. A memory or a computer memory works like the human memory. It will accept data. It will save data. And you can manipulate that data. You can produce various information from that data. And there are four levels of cache memory. In, in your computer, in your computing device, in your computer machine. So we have level one, those uh, accumulators, program counters, uh, the CPU registers. The level two is your main cache memory. And the level three is your commonly known uh, random access memory or memory card. The one that is being attached in your motherboard. The level four is your secondary memory an example is your hardest drive the ssd or the cds dvds compact uh, floppy disk or magnetop so those are the full four full four level of uh, available memory in your computer then how the memory and central processing works together to, to perform an action all those uh, uh, resources will be stored in your cache if it's not uh, able to store those information in your cache it will store will be stored in your main memory and your central processing unit and while performing a task it will you find those resources from your cache memory if those addresses could not be found inside your cache memory, your central processing unit will try to find those resources from your main memory or in your main memory or the main memory of the computer. So that is how the work. The central processing unit and your cash memory